everyone and welcome back to today's episode of Back in a Day. And today we are looking into a haunted house. Uh and it is the say there's the ghost of Christ Kreiser. I cannot pronounce his name but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Welcome to Chrysaville, built in 1885. It was once a small factory town in the New York City borough of Staten Island, but there are few remnants of the neighborhood then known as Chrysaville. A street sign, a big house on a hill, and possibly the spirits of the people who lived there. have heard moans and groans of uh, doors shutting. We were actually hear furniture moving around upstairs sometimes, footsteps. Visitors have reported mysterious sounds and sightings at the house throughout the years. But who could be haunting this place? Well, Balthasar Kreiser built this town. Balthasar was German. He comes to New York in the 1840s. New York City was built of wooden houses and they were burning down and he was in the stone business in Germany. He opened his factory here in the 1850s and became very rich. So rich and he employed everybody that they changed the name of the town from Charleston to Kreiserville. And a lot of people including me still call it Kreiserville. But later on, after they were gone, during the war, the anti-German bigotry, you know, they didn't want anything with a German name too much, so they changed it back to Charleston. This house and the one that is gone, which was a mirror image of this, were built in about 1886 for two of his sons. This was Charles's house. Next door was Edward's house. They were mirror image homes and Charles and Edward worked at the factory across the way. Balthazar lived in a house on another part of the property. That's where he died in August of 1886 of natural causes. The Kreischer family had a fairly peaceful and happy time on the compound, except for one tragic event. In 1894, when Edward Kreischer took his own life at the factory across the road from the home his father built for him. They didn't try to hide it. He shot himself and his wife called the local doctor who lived in Tottenville, which is about three miles down the road. And he came and pronounced him dead. By 1909, the Kreischers had left Staten Island behind for New Jersey. Charles's house is the only one remaining on the property, which changed hands several times and is currently owned by a real estate developer in California. The only really sad thing, aside from Edward's suicide, would be the murder in 2005, I believe. That's all recent history and that has nothing to do with the Kreisers. That was just unfortunate. In 2005, a man named Joseph Young was living in the mansion as a caretaker. Federal investigators say in April of that year, he carried out a hit ordered by a mob soldier in the Bonanno crime family. The victim, Robert McKelvey, was a Bonanno associate. Investigators say Young, also known as Joe Black, stabbed McKelvey and drowned him in a pond on the property. He then cut up the body and burned it in the house's furnace. Young is serving life in prison without parole for the crime. As far as hauntings, I don't really believe in it, so I can't really speak to that. But there's a lot of people that feel that they feel something. I don't think it would be Kreisers because the Kreisers had a happy time here. But possibly with the last events that happened, who knows? Well, I kind of wasn't always a believer believer till I started really catching a lot of stuff on my phone. Rick Rispoli has been the caretaker of the Kreischer Mansion for two years. All right, guys, welcome to the Kreischer Mansion. Let's take a walk inside. This is a 
a thing they used to use in the 1800s called encrusta, to cross between leather and linoleum. They used to use it a lot in the 1800s. They really don't use it these days, but uh, it was done back then a lot. The house is kind of decorated now for the, for the haunt at the Chrysler Mansion, which is a Halloween hayride and haunted house that uh, we run through the whole month of October. Follow the arrows. Am I going to the front parlor room? Is that the proper for the That's 1800s? The This was the main parlor room from back in the 1800s. And also we got the Chrysler bricks. And yeah, I got a fireplace in every room. This is all done with the, the Chrysler bricks right in front of all the fireplaces. And this is the only widow peak that's outside. The other two were in, indoors. Right on the water was where the factory was. During his time there, Rispoli says he's seen and heard many things he can't explain. Actually, one incident, we were actually right here on the porch, unloading chairs one night, about 12.30 at night, and we actually had a song come on the radio. My sister was here with me, we were unloading chairs, and she said, Rick, the radio went on in the car. And I was like, okay. And then all of a sudden she said, here's my keys. We've caught orbs. We've actually caught orbs right here on the porch. Took five shots, the orbs move in five different positions. There was four orbs moving straight right, kind of like in a circle. From one side of this door, right here, straight down to the bottom, to the other side. We've caught pictures of full bodies looking out the windows and full faces looking out the windows at us. The Kreischer Mansion has been designated a landmark by New York City, which means it can't be torn down. The owner has had many plans for it over the years, which never materialized. But Rispoli says it could one day be turned into a museum. Because after years of reported hauntings, who would want to live here? I've kind of got comfortable with it, to be honest with you. I come in here and it's not harmful. Nothing's been harmful at all. It's just been kind of freaky a little bit. But overall, I kind of got comfortable. The house wants to be treated, believe it or not, with respect. If you treat it with respect, it, uh, we don't feel like there's any harm here. End of today's episode and catch us in our next episode of Back in the Day.